G'day. Welcome to EnviroTube. We're going to be looking at wildlife. And next to me is Bob Jones, the king of wildlife in Kringai. Bob, tell me what we're going to look at. Um, we're going to, going to be looking in, in our nest boxes and we're going to have a look at the, our program and, and explain how our program works. Well, one of the things about pygmy possums is they're pretty hard to spot. So we might see them, we might not see them, but what makes this series interesting we have footage. We've got more than just pygmy possums. We've got antichinus. We've got all sorts of stuff. Keep watching and you're going to be amazed at what we can find when we put a camera next to the right food plants. Ah, here we are. I've just seen the marker to the next uh, <laughs> nest box. What here. marker? Uh, this crooked paper bark tea tree here. Okay, Let's... well it's like you're the Sherlock Holmes of Australian bushland because I'm walking along here and I'm seeing a million trees all looking the same, a lot of shrubs, and here's the marker. Yeah, well I'm used to the bush and I, I have good pattern recognition. I feel like Stanley Livingston. So Nick's around here. Uh, Nick's nest box. You're just taking me around in circles, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will find it. We have a GPS though, so. What about your brilliant brain with its pattern recognition? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, we're back to the other one, I think. Uh, new discoveries trying to get to India via going westwards. You are walking around westwards. in circles. I hope Howard's recording this. Finding South America. <laughs> it's not often you get to uh, see a brain rich in pattern recognition guiding someone. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it is through here. <laughs> Alternative route in. <laughs> so in this case, let's have a look and see. This is a much more roomy nest box. Oh, the nesting material again appears to be disturbed a bit. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's in a swirl around a little body. This gives us a clue as to occupation rates and their presence in the area. Why is it hidden? Why don't you have a big, you know, sign on the road saying Pygmy well, we, Possum Box? There are people who, who may not have good intentions to wildlife, so we don't want to publicise their locations. Particularly in the case of uh, vulnerable species like Pygmy Possums, people may collect them or use them as pets or sell them or even destroy them. Or eat them. Eat them. No, they wouldn't eat them. Oh, they I mean, could. <laughs> they're, uh, they're not well, a meal. I don't know, wild <laughs> foods become very popular. Oh, yes. So it's a bit disappointing we haven't found one yet, Bob. I'm starting to think you're not the possum whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't guarantee that they'll be here at any particular time. We've found where they've been using two of the nest boxes, though. We've got another one behind, which we'll have a look at as well. OK, Bob, let's have a look at this one. What do you see? Ah, I see where an animal's been in here, very definitely. It's a big depression with all the nesting material heaped up around it with some fresh tea tree leaves. So the animal's definitely been here, um, but we just haven't found it today. But this is good news. We haven't found the peeping possum, that's a shame, but we found evidence that it's, uh, something's living in there. Now, the sort of things that can live in there, they're pretty small entrance hole. We're talking pygmy possum, antichinus, maybe sugar glider, we're not talking many other animals, are yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. That nesting depression is is about the size of a pygmy possum or an antichinus. Okay, well, how big is this pygmy possum? Uh, pygmy possums are only about this big. Well, could one fit in my hand? Yes, they can easily would it, fit would in. Would a your... grown one fit in my hand? A grown grown one would fit in Peter's hand there. Yeah, well, they're not much of a meal for bush food, are they? No, they're not. We know that they're here by by the wildlife cameras, though. We've got pictures of both pygmy possums and antichinus around this little tree here. Well, we've got some great footage of that, and we're going to put this together in the clip. So you're going to be able to see the spot in the wild, then the camera filming the nocturnal activity. And this is part of our scientific method we use as part of citizen science. Our volunteers are all trained in this so that we can find out whether something has been in the nest box. It's like a treasure hunt. Having these little cameras, it's a really great opportunity to find out what's there. Previously, you'd have to put out hair traps and all sorts of stuff and hope for the best. Why don't you become a wildlife professional? Become the king of citizen science like Bob. Because you can get a wildlife camera, point it at a 
plant like Banksia ericofolia, put it next to a nest box. But don't forget, if you go into the wild, if you go into bushland, you need a license. Now, of course, in your own backyard, you don't need a license. You just need to give yourself permission. Next thing you know, you'll be on EnviroTube talking to me, explaining what you found.